We're here today with Pastor Frederick Price, pastor of Crenshaw Christian Center. Pastor, how are you? It's good to be here with you. For our fall issues, the Prestige Life magazine has deemed you as the life of an American trendsetter. What would you like people to know about you? Well, first off, um, I'm humbled that anyone considered me an American trendsetter, a trendsetter. Um, wow, that's amazing. I'm not sure what I did or who I am to be deemed that, but nevertheless, uh, I'll take the title. Once again, I'll take it with humility. I won't let it go to my head uh, and give all the glory to God. Uh, a trendsetter to me, what it means in my opinion, uh, is one who does something that no one else has done or they've taken something that someone else has done and, it's, and, and have taken it to another level, gone to higher heights with it. So uh, hearing that uh, lets me know that obviously somebody's paying attention to what I'm doing. Uh, they're observing me and they're taking into consideration the contributions that I've made to the body of Christ um, and to the world as a whole. So once again, I'm humbled by it. Uh, I embrace it. Uh, I try not to be like everyone else. I try to do things, not necessarily my way, but the way that I believe God is leading me to do it. And uh, if the fruit, if the result is being a trendsetter, then, then hey, I'll take it. Now, let me ask you, how does this relate to you in practical everyday living? It, it, it applies because I'm just who I am. Uh, I'm, I'm abnormal, uh, not in a negative sense, but I, I don't flow with the traffic. I don't follow the crowd. Uh, I do things because I want to do them or because I have a vested interest in them, not because everyone else is doing it. Like, for example, uh, social media. It took me a while to get on social media. I wasn't even interested. As a matter of fact, if it was up to me, I probably still wouldn't be on social media. I had to have some counsel advise me that it was something that I needed to do. And I, and I see the value in it now. I understand it. But outside of that, I can't necessarily say that it's something that I would have done. And that's just one example. Um... I'm, I'm very simple outside of the workplace, outside of the church world. You know, I'm about coming home to my family, spending time with my wife and my kids. I like watching TV. I like watching movies. I like reading books. I like writing. I like playing video games. And I love tech. And that pretty much sums me up. So um, I would say that that is probably how it applies to me in a practical sense. As a young pastor and a spiritual leader, what new territories do you see yourself reaching out and what are the achievements that are different from the older generation? I believe the Lord has given me this idea of the E-Church and, and pretty much uh, the E-Church is what we see uh, in existence in the body of Christ today. Uh, everyone's using the internet, using the web, using social media, of course. So. Um, it's not really uh, an innovative idea now, but I believe that that's the new territory. I believe uh, the usage of media, uh, social media, um, maybe even movies and television shows, uh, but I believe that that's the new area, uh, the new ground that I believe I'll be taking, that I'll be venturing into. How can innovation play a role in achieving Christians' missions and helping them by spreading your faith? Well, I think the creativity lies in what you do with the avenue that you take. Because it's nowadays, especially with, you know, the movie Noah, the movie Exodus, the television show AD, uh, the Bible, television in and of itself is not innovative now because everyone's doing it. Everybody's on television. Right. Everybody's doing movies. Everybody's on the internet, so it's not like it's a new thing now. So I think the creativity lies in what you do with those platforms. Um, I personally don't believe that we should try to make Christian versions of, of secular and worldly things. I, I think we need to do our own thing. And I believe that that's where our creativity will lie. So let's take uh, the Bible, for example. Um, taking some of the famous and popular biblical accounts and then trans referring those into new formats, uh, such as films, such as TV, uh, such as novels, uh, graphic novels, um, maybe taking 
uh, original characters or, or taking uh, characters like a Samson, like a David, uh, like a Noah, and then inserting them in uh, original storylines. So being allowed some creative control uh, and some creative license, uh, keeping the principles the same, uh, keeping the truths the same, but maybe placing them in new settings. Um, as far as social media goes, I mean, I think it's what you do with it. Um, church by way of social media could be something that's innovative, something that's brand new, that hasn't been done before. Because like I said, the avenues themselves, they're no longer new. So it's about what you do with them. As an individual that leads through ideas, how do you see yourself using social media platforms and digital media as a mass to reach audience around the world? Uh, one of the ways that I believe a mass audience can be reached uh, social media wise is by not just uh, having a one-way presence uh, on, on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever it is. Uh, I believe that interacting with your audience is one way to both have that impact and, and, and grow that impact. Uh, it's pretty obvious that a lot of these ministries have social media teams, and there's nothing wrong with that because it, it, it can be difficult to try to address everything and everyone uh, that you see, every, every tweet, uh, every inboxed message. It's a task. So I believe one of the ways that you can build your social media audience organically uh, is by interacting with your audience. And once again, I don't want to make it about growth or making it about being big or making a name for myself. I was reading a scripture yesterday uh, in Genesis 11 about the Tower of Babel and Nimrod and his people said, we want to make a name for ourselves. And I believe that that's where they went wrong. So their motive was, was incorrect. Uh, so I believe if our motive is right, and once again, we stay in that place of humility, then God will grow. And as long as we stay true to ourselves and stay true to the calling and stay in our lane, we'll be fine. So I believe that's one of the ways that uh, social media and even digital media, that once again, innovative ideas, uh, fresh new ways of doing ministry, new methods, keeping the message the same and not watering it down, not tainting it, uh, but making sure that it's still authentic, that it's still pure and that it's still genuine. Uh, I believe that uh, those are ways by which uh, a presence and audience can be grown via social media or digital media. Pastor, we thank you for coming out today and giving us your time. We thank you very much. God bless.